For many, many years, I really thought that I had the devil within me. I was convinced of it. At some point later on, I thought this was ridiculous, because I didn't believe that this was true about me, especially because I had a lot of beautiful experiences after my near-death experience. Miss Stiefel, at the age of six, you had a very dramatic encounter with death. What exactly happened? I was on a swimming trip with my friends from our village. We have a lake near the village with a bathing area. My sister, who is seven years older than me, and her friends were teenagers at the time and were supposed to look after me. One of the girls had an air mattress with her and had never seen an air mattress before and was extremely attracted by it. I just absolutely wanted that air mattress and finally they handed it over to me just to have their peace and quiet. They were busy doing something else and I was happy to go out on the lake with this air mattress. I couldn't swim yet. And I also didn't know that you are not supposed to turn around on an air mattress. So when I tried to turn around on it, I fell off. I spent a while trying to get hold of the air mattress again, trying to grab it, but at some point I had no energy left anymore. I don't really remember that clearly. I couldn't say how long I was kicking in the water and struggling to grab this air mattress. Anyway, an old fisherman at the beach saw that I was drowning. My first emotional reaction was panic, and panic to feel seaweed around my feet and legs. That caused extreme crazy panic within me. I felt like I was being pulled down by something. And then, suddenly, this panic was gone. Just seconds later and I was not afraid anymore. This feeling of fear was absolutely gone. And I am 63 years old now, and I honestly have to say that I have never again in my whole life felt such a feeling of absolute bliss and happiness as I felt in this situation. And I can actually vividly recall this feeling of extreme bliss even today. It has accompanied me all those years and I can dive into this vivid memory even today. It's an unbelievably happy feeling that I really couldn't describe with any words since language is so inadequate. I saw a color that doesn't exist and it was indescribably beautiful. I have tried all my life with numerous painting techniques like watercolor and so on to create this beautiful color, but I never succeeded, especially because there was such an intense glow and shine to it. Really, the beauty of this color still fills my heart to this very day. And I've heard sounds, I couldn't say it was singing, it was more like humming, like huge choir. Not singing songs, but rather just humming melodies. That's what it sounded like. I was carried by these sounds. And I was feeling absolutely supported and safe. There was this feeling of absolute safety and well-being, of being cared for and looked after. In one word, it was heavenly. It was heaven. It was absolutely wonderful. A very deep emotional experience. What happened next? Were you rescued? How long had you been underwater? I simply don't know. I couldn't say. For me, it felt like infinity and eternity. For me, it felt like endless time. This fisherman told me later that he had come to rescue at once and that he had actually brought me up from the bottom of the lake. I just remember that he was busy doing something with me, trying to bring me back to life. 
And then I came to. And I was extremely sad and upset and angry that someone had taken me away from this wonderful place. I didn't like that one bit. That was a huge disappointment and painful for me. He, of course, was extremely happy that he had succeeded in bringing me back to life. And I was very unhappy about that. Can you also recall anything more concrete, any additional details about your near-death experience? No, not at all. It was just this deep, intense feeling. I remember this extremely beautiful color and those harmonious sounds and this indescribably beautiful feeling of happiness and bliss. I was like gone. I didn't exist in this moment. I was like absorbed in a field of bliss. A lot of people who've had near-death experiences find that those moments have been significant for the rest of their lives. Do you agree with that? Do you also think that what happened to you at such an early age has been a big influence on the rest of your life? For me, it was of groundbreaking importance. Of course, it is all hypothetical, because I have no idea what profession I would have chosen or how I would have lived my life without this significant experience, since it happened very early in my life. But I really think it has been a basis for me ever since, because it still fulfills me today. It has opened a gateway for me to an inner world that has become as real to me as anything I can touch. And that, of course, has shaped me in all my attitudes. For me, it is a fact that there exists so much more than we can touch. Therefore, I felt a lot of things were unimportant. I believe it has given me a great inner freedom. What was all this like for you as a child? Were you able to talk openly about what had happened to you with your parents? I couldn't even tell at home what had happened at all. The risk of getting punished for it was too high. That I would be locked away in the basement or something. I experienced a lot of violence in my childhood. So I had nobody I would dare to tell anything about it. I was convinced I had made a mistake. I shouldn't have gone out on the lake with that air mattress, and nobody had actually heard anything about that accident at the time. And also all of the other subsequent experiences that I was able to have after that near-death experience, I had to keep to myself. I had no contact person for that. I was growing up in a family that treated me as if I didn't belong to them at all. Everything I said was causing problems. My family actually said to me that I had the devil within me because I was simply totally different from the rest of my family members. I was extremely joyful, lively, curious, sometimes even a bit daring and a wild and a bit of a reckless child. And that didn't fit in with this family at all. Was this near-death experience also an inner safety space for you that you could always flee to when in adversity? Absolutely. That was my perfect world. And there were other additional aspects of it later on as well. I also had access to other beings and this was met with extreme opposition. I was told that it was all just my own imagination. I had the devil within me and it's better to be careful about such things. Because when I was told that I had the devil within me, I was really scared. I was really scared that it could be true. I couldn't tell anyone about the fact that after my near-death experience, I saw other colors. I saw colors around trees and especially around plants at first, but I couldn't talk about it with anyone. And later on, I really saw beings or figures in everyday life as well. 
and I was not able to talk about that at all. I was keeping this whole other world to myself, and I didn't even have the urge to tell anyone anymore. It was obvious that it must all be kept a secret. What was it like as a teenager to deal with that discrepancy? On the one hand, to grow up normally, and on the other hand, to have a secret life that no one knows about. Was this conflict evident in your teenage years? That conflict was very evident. I was actually in my teenage years pretty often suicidal. I just wanted to go back to this other world so much. I had a huge nostalgia, a huge longing for death. I still had this joyful side within me, this joy of life, but at the same time, I was experiencing an infinite loneliness. That was very hard to bear. And since about the age of eight, I had also been fleeing from my home into the woods, where I was able to talk to my beings without being watched and without being afraid. This was my realm. I had to be surrounded by nature. And surrounded by nature, I felt safe and sound. And there within nature, I was allowed to live in freedom and harmony with my inner world. But in puberty, there are also other needs coming up, and I would have wanted to belong to a group. I could never do that. That was hard to deal with at the time. What was your own perception of yourself? Did you think you were not normal? Or did you think you were ill? For many, many years, I really thought that I had the devil within me. I was convinced of it. At some point later on, I thought this was ridiculous, because I didn't believe that this was true about me, especially because I had a lot of beautiful experiences after my near-death experience. And I was figuring that this can't be true, that I had the devil within me and had such wonderful experiences with peaceful beings. Of course, I started at some point to look for explanations. I was a child at the time and I was immensely involved in reading a lot. And I was already rationalizing. I was asking myself what kind of explanations could exist for these phenomena. And when I was about 17 or 18, I was absolutely convinced that I was schizophrenic. I had come across an article about schizophrenia and read about split personality and such. And at that point, I was actually convinced this is it. I found it. A lot of people report that they finally stumbled across the term near-death experience and are very relieved and happy to be able to sort out what actually happened to them. Did you also have such an aha experience? That happened relatively late. I got married very, very young, at the age of 19. I was pregnant. It was difficult. We had a hard time. No money, a lot of problems. New organization, new orientation. I had a lot of real essential problems. And for about five years, I had been busy sweeping everything that I saw and felt under the carpet concerning this other world. I wanted to get rid of it. I wanted to be absolutely normal and have a family and a normal everyday life. And I was very aware of the fact that I had made a huge effort to get rid of all that didn't fit in. For instance, sometimes when I was cooking dinner, I actually realized that I had been mentally absent for half an hour or so. And that happened repeatedly and more and more often, that I just drifted off. And that caused a lot of fear in me. There was this fear of schizophrenia. And I was so desperate that I looked up psychiatrists in Zurich in my phone book. At the time, we used to have phone books and couldn't find anything in the Internet. And I said, help me find the right address, really, with my finger in the air, letting it go down the page. And I found a name there, and I called his number and made an appointment. And this guy, I remember it with great amusement, was informed by me at once with the diagnosis of schizophrenia. And I 
<laughs> und der hat, hat natürlich... Of course, he must have been bewildered about it and might have formed a first opinion on that. But he kept quiet and he was listening to me and then he explained to me that I was not at all schizophrenic and that I would have special abilities, paranormal abilities, and that I should use those abilities and that I should accept that and come to terms with that and integrate that into my life. And that really opened up a new horizon for me, a totally new point of view. I considered him to be an authority in his field and someone who knows what he's talking about. So I accepted his view that I was not ill or schizophrenic after all. And from then on, I started to make friends with the thought that I just had special abilities. And to train myself to be able to turn it off whenever I minded it and to turn it on when I wanted to use those abilities. And that was my training program for several years. I would like to mention your extraordinary perceptions. What is that like for you today? What can you do? And what does that mean for your work today? It is very important for me today because it is something natural for me that I have successfully integrated in my life. I didn't mind it anymore either. Of course, in my profession, I use it very deliberately when I'm coaching people, especially in situations that are very hard to evaluate, to find the cause, the root of the problem. I'm asking helpful spirits who have come to me together with the client for their support. And I also get answers. I get some very helpful hints as to what I'm to do next, how to intervene. And I'm extremely thankful for that. It was not easy for me to get to know how to use my abilities willingly because in the beginning I had no faith. I'm a very critical person, maybe possibly even an extremely critical person. And for a long time I was full of doubts, saying to myself that those abilities are actually just fantasies or wishful thinking. It was really very critical in my own judgment about myself. And only with time I realized that those abilities were actually really very effective and helpful in their influence. Can you recall a certain incident when you were able to convince that inner skeptic at last? Yes, the fact that was hard for me to accept was that those hints that I'm able to receive with my special abilities are often really bizarre. That they don't fit into my mindset. Many, many years ago, I had a client visiting for the third or fourth time and we couldn't move a single step forward. The whole situation was really in stagnation. During the last session, I had already received the hint that I should tell her to go out the front door and come in again. And I considered that pretty unbelievable and was thinking to myself, what is that supposed to mean? I'm not crazy. And I didn't dare say it out loud. But the next time with this client, it happened again. That I should tell her to go out and come back inside the house right afterwards. And I was really afraid of what would happen next. I felt pretty stupid but actually told her. And then suddenly this woman bursts into tears and asks me repeatedly, how on earth could you know? How could you know about it? She was totally agitated and I was totally, absolutely astonished. I had no idea what she was talking about and I knew nothing about the whole story. And then she told me that she was actually wearing stolen shoes. And every time she was stepping across a threshold, it was very hard for her to do that with stolen shoes. She was a kleptomaniac. 
and she was stealing just as many shoes as possible. And that was a real breakthrough for her, to admit that and to acknowledge that. And I would have never thought this had anything to do with her shoes. It was a totally bizarre hint for me, but for the woman, it was the right hint. You remained dedicated to the topic of dying. In one of your professions, you're working in the field of end-of-life care. That is a logical task, because I have always been interested in crossing the borders. Crossing the border for a little while, as I was allowed to as a child, that has always held a strong fascination for me. And knowing that I would have liked to cross over completely the abilities that I have received after my near-death experience have led to a situation at a big party when I was introduced to a young woman and while shaking her hands I suddenly knew she was going to die. Most of the time it's hard to tell when something that I see is going to happen. But this time it was absolutely clear because I saw three small children being affected by their mother's death. And I didn't even know that she had three small children. I was pretty shocked, actually. And I also talked about it with my husband later, asking him if he knew anything about her. He knew nothing. And she was such a young, fit, sporty and healthy woman. So this took place at a party of my husband's company. But a few months later, my husband came home and told me that he had heard from someone at work that this young woman was admitted to a hospital and won't be able to go back home anymore. At the time, I was still convinced that if I had such abilities, I was supposed to use them to be an influence in such situations. For instance, to send her positive energy. And I really got the feedback that I was not supposed to meddle with any of it, because this is her own path. And I grew very angry in that situation, arguing that it doesn't make any sense if I know something, but I'm not allowed to intervene and not allowed to do anything. All my abilities didn't seem to make any sense anymore. But then I had the idea to do something practical instead. This colleague of my husband had told him that he is not feeling up to this whole situation and doesn't know how to deal with telling his wife about her impending death. So I decided to pay a visit to her in the hospital. And I helped out with organizing childcare for the three children. And a very close connection was built between me and this young woman, even though we had not known each other before. I was at her side, remained at her side for about half a year, active end-of-life care. This is how it all started, because she was convinced there is nothing after death. And I just felt this extreme fear. I was convinced that it is necessary and essential to just take away that fear just by being there, not to be a missionary, it's not about my story. The important thing is that there's someone present during those last stages to accompany the dying. Considering your near-death experience and all your other abilities beyond all five senses, what do you expect to happen after death? How does life go on after death? I have no idea. Of course I have some expectations, but I'm aware that these are just a built-up stage of thoughts that I personally have combined, construction of my own thoughts. But what is clear to me is that we still exist after death and that we actually go back home. And I feel that this is my home, this is where I came from, this is where I'm going to recover for the next steps ahead, that's what I expect. I expect to meet my soulmates there, the members of my soul group, or whatever you might call that. And I hope to find out what the purpose was behind all that. I don't know. I would like to know about that. I'm curious. And I expect to be able to choose freely all the circumstances of my next incarnation. A lot of people are very much afraid of death. Do you see a reason for that from your point of view? Not at all. 
I couldn't imagine any reason why anyone should be afraid of death. I can understand fear of the process of dying. I also don't know if I will be afraid of the process of dying or not. Fear of pain and loss of control and everything else that is part of existing as a human being. It sounds arrogant, but it's such a deep feeling. I'm looking forward to this moment. It's for me a moment of joy and of curiosity. I must admit I have not seen much, but this feeling was so full of safety and care, of well-being, of love, of warmth. It can't be bad or difficult or scary. I couldn't imagine that was possible. Thank you so much for telling us about your near-death experience and your other experiences. Thank you so much for this interview. You're welcome.